Hey everyone, you know, for years, my videos have been coming to you from here, my art studio. But today, we're gonna put down the stylus, go down these stairs, because behind this door is my wood shop. Because art is my profession and woodworking is my hobby, this place is truly my sanctuary. Now, I promise my channel is not gonna switch to woodworking. But with the holidays around the corner, today I want to show you how to make this pixel art serving board. You could use any pixel art you like for this. Being a sucker for 80s and 90s nostalgia, I found this Pinterest board, which I'll link to in the description. It's got all these 8-bit characters pre-mapped onto grids. I settled on the classic Super Mario Brothers Goomba. The Goomba is a great character for this project because... Hey, get back here! <clears throat> because it has three distinct colors. And more importantly, colors that can be captured by natural woods. I do have a whole slew of different wood stains, but I want to avoid them completely. This board has to be food safe, and I just don't want to take the risk. So, natural wood it is, but where do you get this wood? Well, I'll tell you where you don't get it. Home Depot. The lumber selection here just isn't suited for our needs. Although, while you're here, go find yourself a flat piece of three-quarter inch plywood. We'll need it later. Then get back in your car and drive to your local hardwood dealer. I'm at Century Mill in Stovall, Ontario. Here we have a vast collection of different colors and species of hardwoods, from local to exotic. For this project, I'll pull off the rack a piece of hard maple, some cherry, and some walnut. Three naturally different colors, just beautiful. To do this project, we'll need a table saw, some trigger clamps, a tape measure, wood glue, parchment paper, sandpapers, a drill, a belt sander, and mineral oil. And if you have these, go ahead and grab a framing square, a random orbit sander, and a router. Oh, I almost forgot, you'll also need a glue gun. All right, let's make some wooden pixels. Now, we need a way to make these cuts as uniform as possible. So I'll show you how to use our miter gauge to make a simple jig. Grab that three quarter inch piece of plywood, make sure it's flat, set your fence to about two and a half inches, and go ahead and rip it down. This is gonna be an extension fence. It sits beyond the miter gauge and beyond the blade. For me, that's about 20 inches. So I'll cross cut mine to 20 inches, and this is the jig. Also, safety first, people. Anyway, use a couple of one and a quarter inch screws with washers to fasten our new extension fence to the miter gauge. Now, I wanna be sure that that fence is square to the blade. You could just blindly trust the readings on your miter gauge, but it doesn't take much effort to grab a framing square and line this up. You can unlock it so it freely swivels, then slowly bring it back until it just kisses the blade squarely. Lock that down, and for extra points, you can check the other side of the blade. You might think that's overkill, but my gauge is actually a hair off of the markings. Go ahead and make a partial cut through your new fence. And now that we know exactly where that blade will cut, we can make a precise measurement for the dimensions of our wooden pixels. I'll make a mark here at 3 eighths of an inch, which we'll come back to later. I'm gonna prepare this wood now for cutting pixels, cross-cutting my stock down to a manageable size first. But we're not quite ready to cut pixels yet. See, the lumber you buy at hardwood dealers is usually rough sawn. It's also not often very flat. This machine's called a jointer. Its blade is aligned with a flat table, and you can mill one flat face of your lumber this way. Put the flat face up against the jointer's fence, and you get a nice 90 degree angle from edge to face. I'll now feed that original flat face into this machine called a thickness planer. Its flatbed registers the bottom face and replicates it on the top face. And the fourth side is simply cut square at the table saw. The result is what's called S4S, or surfaced four sides. And while it's nice to have the tools to do this yourself, it's not needed. Your lumber yard can do it for you, if you ask nicely. All right, let's cut this stuff up. Just a few additional setup items we need. One is a stop block. I made this out of that same plywood. It's just two pieces cut square and sandwiched together. Then I have this additional piece of that same plywood, but this is just one piece cut square. And lastly, you'll need a good old clamp. So you remember that mark we made right there? The general idea is to bring in our stop block, put it right up against that mark, clamp it to our fence, and then of course take our piece of wood, butt it up against the stop block, and run it through the blade. However, this setup is dangerous. The reason it's dangerous, and I'll use this little strip here as an example, when we run the wood through the saw, in this configuration, our piece of wood is now sandwiched between the spinning blade and the stop block, neither of which are going to move. 
So what is going to move? Well, it's our cutoff piece. The blade might catch it and with extremely high velocity, throw it back right at us. I would prefer that not to happen. So instead, what we're going to do is use this little guy as a spacer. You place this right up against the pencil mark, then holding that down with your finger, slide the stop lock right up against that, and you clamp the main stop lock right there. You bring in your piece of wood, slide it up against the spacer, remove that spacer, which leaves a nice safe distance here, and you run that through the blade. Safety first, suckers. So here's the first official pixel cut. The larger stock gets cut down into several strips. Then you take a couple of those strips, put them up against the spacer, hold them tightly against the fence, and run them through to get your pixels. From the back, the motion looks like this. It's my right hand that supports and pushes the fence. The other thing I did for safety is I ripped my stock in half. That also helps minimize the impact of any unsquare angles. Well, I got two done. Let's do the other 150. This'll take you a few hours. It took me about two hours, and that's with the benefit of having gone through this several times. Put on a podcast or something. By the way, I know how many pixels I need because I went ahead and counted this grid. I'll color code each row of pixels and then just add it all up. Pretty self-explanatory. All right, safety tip. I wouldn't blame you if you're a little queasy at the sight of my hands this close to the blade. And it's at this point I reminded myself, hey, there's a better way to do this. Put the strips up against the spacer and clamp them down. This will give you a better quality cut too because you can ensure there's no slippage. You can also cut through more strips at once. Getting three pixels instead of two really adds up. You guys know what's better than progress? Being finished. Oh, and if you're curious, that's only about $8 worth of wood. All right, this step is unnecessary, but totally cool. Let's dry assemble this guy and see how he looks. Come on, that's pretty awesome. Of course, we have to destroy it now to actually go glue it together. Kind of a visual ASMR there. So to glue all these pixels together, I've created another simple jig. It's made from that three quarter inch plywood. These two pieces are the same and they're just a little bit taller than our pixels. The idea is that a row of pixels can be arranged and held flush. Now these two pieces are just a bit narrower than our pixels. That means they can squeeze just inside this arrangement and hold the pixels together this way. So the clamping would look like this. You've got your row of pixels, use two small clamps on either end of that, Slide these two pieces in and use a larger clamp to hold them in place. This will hold them nice and tight for gluing. Now, because wood glue sticks to wood, we gotta line our jig with parchment paper. Place it over one face of the plywood and fold it pretty tight. Tape won't stick to parchment paper very well, so I used hot glue to hold this in place. Only the top gets glued though, because you want the bottom to sit flat on your workbench. When it comes to gluing this up, we'll need two things, wood glue and patience. This is Type Bond 3, which is food safe and waterproof. We glue this up row by row. The first row of the Goomba will be made of four cherry pieces. Nothing really innovative here. Put glue on the pixels and clamp them together. I like to wipe off the squeeze out glue at the bottom so it doesn't stick to my workbench. Or you could use parchment paper under there. Anyway, I let this sit for about 30 minutes. That's enough time for the glue to set and I can safely remove the clamps. That's a nice looking row of pixels. On to the next row now, and hey, maybe I do have an innovation here. Want to spread that glue smoothly? Use a Q-tip. By the way, if the grain direction on these pixels matters to you, this is the time to apply that oversight. If you're wondering if the grain direction matters to me, I like to glue the rows of pixels together in stages. They should be pretty flat, but on a piece of 80 grit sandpaper, it can't hurt to gently remove some excess material. So while my individual rows of pixels are gluing up, I'm also busy assembling the greater Goomba. No special jig for this, I'm afraid. Just line up everything by eye. I don't know about you guys, but I've always found it really rewarding to work on projects that have a lot of small pieces that have to come together. You know, it could be my painting background. In painting, I'm used to assembling hundreds of shapes. Here, I'm assembling a hundred pieces of wood. Different medium, but same temperament. Equally possible, I suppose, that I just enjoy torturing myself. And look what we have here. Isn't that cool? You know, I feel like this project could be done right now. Well, maybe with a little sanding, but we're not done. We are gonna take this guy and turn him into a full-fledged serving board. Oh no, not again. This video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. I was on vacation in a different country last month and I wanted to watch my show, but it wasn't there. 
So I used Surfshark to change my location and magically the show was available. The show wasn't friends, by the way. That was just an example. I'm sure you're aware of the amount of data mining, surveillance, and just malicious stuff that can be done with your personal information. Entities on the internet are watching. Surfshark VPN will encrypt your online DNA and place you anywhere on the globe. This turns you into a hard to trace online user, which makes the internet a safer and more enjoyable place. So no matter where you are, you can get a really good deal right now. Use promo code BUCHIGANG and get 83% off, plus an extra three months free. Surfshark offers a money back guarantee, so there's no risk. It's time to start surfing the internet with your set of rules. And you do it with Surfshark VPN. All right, back to our project. The idea now is to build out from the Goomba in individual strips. That'll give us a board. This is some leftover maple from my pixels and an additional piece of maple that I'll need. Now, many of these strips will be one pixel width. So I'll use a few spare pixels here to give myself a rough measurement, then rip down a piece of that plywood to use as a test piece. I'll use it to see if it sits totally flush with the pixels. As you can see, that one's a hair short, so I made the adjustment and cut a second tester piece. And this one works. Now I can cut my maple strips. So first you want to decide the width of the entire board, subtract from that the width of each row, and I can get two pieces out of this one strip. I actually like to assemble about three strips at a time. Make sure you get good glue coverage all the way around. And clamping these up is a bit of a strategic process. Try to get good squeeze out on all joints. While my clamps are occupied on the left, I'm teeing up the strips on the right. <sighs> you can never have enough clamps. Huh, could be a cool art piece with these negative spaces. Anyway, several hours later, I've got a fully embedded Goomba, but I still wanna add a top and bottom piece. But this is where I get into trouble. Look at this ugly gap at the top, and the bottom is just egregious. So I gotta square this board up a bit. First, I'll cut off the excess on either side. Offcuts look like a pixelated waveform, by the way. Two edges cleaned up, now we tackle the top and bottom. Grab a scrap piece of plywood and place your board on top of it. Then line up the edge so it's just hanging over the plywood edge. With a hot glue gun, attach your board to the plywood. Your table saw fence references the other flat edge of the plywood. Line up the exposed edge of the plywood with your blade, and that'll ensure the blade just shaves off the edge of your board. Okay, you don't need the plywood anymore. Now you can just place that newly jointed edge of your board against your fence. Carefully lining it up here so the blade will just shave off the innermost part, thereby creating a straight line all the way through. We are really getting somewhere now. God, I love when things work. Just one last clamping and we can get to sanding. Bring in your belt sander loaded with 80 grit sandpaper. With your board securely clamped to your workbench, go over it several times. Be sure to keep the pressure light and even. Your first goal is to get rid of the gunk and achieve the general appearance of flatness. A good way to test for actual flatness is to scribble pencil everywhere, then go over it again with the sander. If the pencil marks all come off with even pressure, you're flat. I got some news for you. Sanding sucks. I've also got a planer right here, which I would have to be stupid not to use. If you don't have a planer, learn to love it. Nice and flat, look at that. It's time to start sanding. You could get out some grits of sandpaper and do it by hand, but I don't wanna do that. You could make a sanding block with some plywood and use that, but I don't wanna do that either. I'll use a random orbit sander and I'll go through the grits right up to 320. After 120, I'll grab this water sprayer and spritz the entire board. This raises the wood grain, which makes things feel all fuzzy, but it only happens once. So once the board is dry, sand it back smooth. People who haven't seen this video will wonder just how you accomplished this. All right, the corners are too sharp. You could use a sanding block to round those over, but I'll use my palm router with a proper round over bit. Then bring that home with some sanding. Okay, don't stop the video now. This is the best part. Grabbing some mineral oil and... Oh boy, this is magic. I can never get over how much richness the oil brings out of the wood. This is beeswax infused mineral oil. It's 100% food safe and the wax will help seal any little gaps. I'll let this sit for an hour, then buff it in and remove the excess. I've given these as gifts to family and friends and their reactions are always something. This one, I think I'll put it up for sale. If you'd like to own it, check the link in the description. I know this was a change of pace, but I hope you had fun watching it. 
I'll get right back to painting videos, I promise. Anyway, I just want to thank my patrons, and I'll see you in the next video.